Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you again today for another day in our watercolor journal books. I am going to be painting a door today. Someone had requested doors some time ago. Um, so I'm going to be doing an exterior outside door uh, where we're going to do a door with some stonework and some greenery and flowers around it. So very kind of country, um, European-esque type of door situation maybe inspired by or not maybe but definitely inspired by a trip I took to uh, the Lake District in uh, the UK so uh, that's where this one comes from but we're gonna do a little bit of drawing but not a whole lot just the door itself but then the rest of the stonework and the flowers and all that we'll just do freehand with paint so I'm gonna create just a door, a rectangle here. That's so high. I'm also going to give it a little foot ledge, something for the stone variety. And then we will put on some kind of hardware here. I'm just going to draw in like a big loop handle and then also I'm going to put on kind of these big I don't know what they're called on a door I'm sure someone will tell me but like these like iron um I don't know what they are it's not the hinge itself the hinges are over here but it's kind of like a black iron piece that's comes out across the door like this okay so those are on there this door is going to be white but it's going to have some nice shadows on it inside the door frame here um, it will have a little bit of suggestion of wood planks even though it'll be painted white or whitewashed white uh, so that is the door itself and then above it I'll just draw out a little bit here so you can kind of see where we're going but above it we're going to do some kind of creeping type of flower that's going to hang down here and find its way like an ivy or a for forsythia is it forsythia that is this beautiful purple kind of draping flower I don't know I don't know if this is normal for this area that I saw this door, but I'm kind of adding the greenery. This wasn't on the door itself. All right, so there we have it. There's our door kind of sketched out and this is gonna be some stonework over here. So let's get to painting. So first I'm going to start by painting in actually my stonework. And that is going to be in varying shades of gray. So we're gonna make some gray today with our colors. We're gonna do a little color mixing because with stonework getting slightly different varying um, tones of gray can be really helpful. So I'm just making some space for myself here. So gray or black is made by mixing all of the primary colors together. And then depending on if you have a little bit more yellow, a little bit more of the red tone or a little bit more blue in it, um, will change the tone of the gray itself. So we're gonna start with Quadacro Magenta. I'm using a flat wash brush right now because that's what I'm gonna use for my stonework. But if you only have a round brush, go ahead and use that. It's actually a little better for mixing. But I'm gonna pull out magenta. I find it's easiest to get to gray when I start with, by making purple. I am going to pull out, so magenta and phthalo blue. So I've made this purple. Purple is kind of closest to a gray tone in my opinion. And then I'm gonna take some cadmium yellow. I'm actually running out of yellow and that is going to make a gray. See that? 
beautiful gray color. So we'll put that up here so you can see my gray. And now I can take that base of gray and add just a little bit more magenta to it to make it a little bit warmer. So magenta and yellow will give it a warmer tone. Um, and then this is much warmer, but see, we have a different color gray. And then by adding more blue, you can swing it further. So this is going to bring it back to neutral by adding a little blue and then let's swing a little further down the blue side. And this is more of a blue gray. So you can see this has more of a neutral color, a red tint, a blue tint. And again, you can keep swinging. You can go to a more yellow side you know, or a more greenish gray with the more yellow and blue in there. It'll get more of a green tone to it. So that is how you make lots of different versions of what would still be considered a gray color or neutrals, you know, this one. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to make something a little more on the blue side. And then something kind of in this yellowy tan side. So let's make another puddle of it over here. Oh, I added a lot of blue which just means I can make a whole lot of gray, but it means I need a lot of my other colors. So we'll go purple and pick up yellow. So you get to watch me mix a lot of colors. <laughs> Do a lot of color mixing. All right, there we are. We're closer to a more neutral gray. This one is a little too blue. I'm gonna add some magenta and some more blue, yellow. There we go. And then of course, the darker the pigment you want or the darker the paint you want, the darker closer to black you want, you would add more paint, less water. But I want these to be really light, like sandy stone color. And then I'm gonna make one more over here. I'm gonna take this. Oh, I just picked up purple, not what I wanted. So we made all of these gray colors with just our three primary colors. And you can use different blues, different qualities of blues. You could use an ultramarine blue. Um, you could use, sorry, a cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, a cerulean blue, and you'll kind of get all different kind of tones will be easier or less easy to make. I have to take a little bit of this purple. There we go. Okay. That feels good. Lots of water. All right. So I'm going to use the white of this page as the mortar kind of between my stones. That was a whole lot of time for mixing. And I am going to, and I don't want the, so I'm going to use my brush, but, and I'm going to use the squareness of my brush, but I want them to be not perfect. I'm going to leave space in between. I 
because I want them to look like stones. And I'm just going to kind of bop between the different colors, adding water, making them different lengths and sizes. And you can see they're all kind of different colors. Now you could definitely make these more perfect with your brush and um, more like cinder blocks but that's not really what I'm going for here. And then I'm gonna go back in and drop some other shades of gray into a few of these while they're still wet. So you might wanna not wait till things dry too much. So I'm just using the three colors to kind of interplay with each other because again, we want these to not be perfect. They're stone, they are organic, they have different shades and values and little divots and and you can even have them come a little closer together. If the white is too much for you, if it's white is just too stark for like the space in between, you can always um, put a light wash of like very, very, very pale yellow or um, another very, very pale gray color. And then I'm even like letting some of the white space get eaten up by the stone, like where they touch each other a little bit. they're packed so closely together or they've settled over time that kind of thing so and then let it dry and then see how you feel about it after you add all the other elements um, we'll see how we feel about it after it kind of completely dries these are going to dry a little bit lighter and we'll come back to it all right so let's move on I'm going to switch my brush to my round and I'm gonna move on to a green gold color. That's this beautiful color. This is like when the sun shines on um, beautiful foliage. It's this color. So I'm gonna start, we haven't even touched the door yet. I'm gonna start up here and just paint a very loose leaving white space. So this is gonna be the top of our foliage. And it's gonna kind of wrap around the side here. Boop, boop, boop. Do a little, little splash. Leaving some white space, leaving some room to breathe. And then I'm going to bring in some of my sap green and I'm going to start to drop that in below. And you could just do green. You could just do like these viney green leaves or vines kind of stretching their way across. You don't have to add any flowers, but I'm going to add flowers. And we're going to come back with more green too. And 
an even darker color because this is this is layer one of our foliage. Okay, so let's throw in some beautiful purple. I'm just going to pick some purple out of here. Mixing your purples is a great way to get lots of varying um, shades and colors of purple. So I'm going to come in with these purple kind of hanging flowers. I'm going to start light and again I'm going to add darker color as we build this up. I'm going to throw just a few over here but not too much around the door. Now that we have that first layer down, let's tuck in some darker colors. So the darkest color in this is going to be closest to where this big vine kind of comes over the wall or the door here. So the purple is going to be darkest here and the green is also going to be darkest here. We're going to add more green in a moment. But then like the top of it, the sun is coming down and hitting the top. So that is going to be the brightest. And you might have to do this in a couple of layers. Some of my stones were not completely dry. So my <laughs> purple flowers are bleeding into them, but that's okay. Okay, we're going to let that dry and then we're going to come back and add some really deep shadows, but let's work on our door a little bit. So let's go back to one of these gray colors. And now I'm going to outline my door in a gray just to get started. This is the door frame. Just kind of right over where the, um, the pencil lines were. I am going to get an even darker kind of pedestal step here. Okay, and that looks very basic, like what the heck is going on? What's gonna make this really work and I'm just going to pull out some Payne's gray instead of watching you making you watch me mix more gray. Is that we're going to put shadows on this door because it's going to be a white door. And the door itself is going to have to stay white, but we're going to put shadows so if the sun is coming down from here, we're going to put shadows on the side of the door. So light, light gray that are going to mimic what you would see. I'm going to paint right over those lines there, like mimic the vines of, so it's going to be darkest in the corner. Sorry, it might. My words are not coming out right. The vines that are above it. And then as if they were casting a shadow. And then you can even give your vines over here shadows on your stone wall. But I'm going to wait to do that. It would be darkest up in the corner. And then they would kind of fade out. So as if these are casting shadows. Okay. So we paint right on there. That really scares people. We still have our details to paint in. We also have kind of these, I'm using a really, really light gray color, lots of water, but the impression of kind of wood planks here. So I'm going to paint in some very light lines there. 
Now the part up at the top of the door, again, like I said, the darkest part is gonna be this band right here, both with our green, our purple, and even under our door. So I'm gonna add more color up in this corner because this is going to be tucked in to the darkest corner, the most covered up. All right, so let's let that dry and then we'll come back and add another layer and then we'll put on our details on our door there as well. And again, you can do lots of layers and more on this. Um, as you let layers dry and kind of decide you could go a little bit darker here, a little bit darker here, but while it's still wet, everything's gonna keep bleeding out and um, is not going to kind of hold up. And it'll all be like one color eventually and all blended into each other. So you're gonna tell me right now, Shana, put down your brush, put down your brush. Okay, we'll come back in a moment after everything's dry. All right, we're back and everything is dry. So let's add on some more layers to really punch up the contrast and give things a really kind of beautiful tone to them. All right, I'm going to pull out sap green here, but I'm gonna add some phthalo blue to it to give us this dark, rich green color. And I'm gonna come under here So you can see, I'm not gonna leave it just like this. I am gonna blend it out a little bit. Just take some more of this over here. Can add a few. All right, and then also with my purple, I could even add a little paints gray to my purple to make it even a little darker. And really just right up in here where it would be in most shadow. And then blending it out. So my brush has just water on it now. It's not a lot of water, just nice and damp. And blending these out just a little bit. I could even go down the spine a little bit just to give some varying textures. If you mixed your purple with a blue and a magenta, especially if you use like an ultramarine blue, you'd have some beautiful separation in the colors uh, as they dried, which just gives it a much more kind of organic feel than using like the dioxazine purple where everything kind of just stays purple. All right, a little bit more, this dark green color right in here. Beautiful, and then last but not least, again, I'm gonna take some paint gray my small brush, I am gonna come over here in this corner. We're gonna get a little darker.
Blend that out a little bit. I don't want it to be super dark all the way down. Just up in this corner here. And then I can go in and if you need a smaller brush and you have one, go for it. But I'm gonna come in and do these details. So I'm gonna give a little door handle there hanging down. And then we have these little iron bands that go across. Some of them just end these. I'm putting a little flourish on the end. Some of them are just squared off. Almost like a little spade on the end of it there. <clears throat> And I'm going to give a little darker color, maybe a little lighter, kind of towards the bottom, as thin as I possibly can, to show like a little crack under the door, a little separation from. And then if the sun is coming this way, so on the door handle, you don't have to do this, but we would get like a little shadow. So very light gray cast on the door this way. So just inside a light gray shadow. I don't know if you can see that from the handle cast it on the door. And then if you want to go back into your stones at all, you can definitely go back into that. I've lost all my grays from before. So I don't think I'm going to go back into mine because I'd have to spend all that time remixing those grays. I'm going to be happy with them now, but you could certainly go back in. Here I have a little bit of a light gray and just add some more uh, color to the edges and give them their own little shadows. <clears throat> I guess I am going back into them a little bit. Just a little more texture and interest. There we go. Oh, and you could also put kind of a little shadow, like a gray cast just under here and on the sides of your little vines here falling down. That would be like the shadows of the vines themselves or our little flowers. There we go. There we have it, our nice little uh, European door, um, little country-esque and a beautiful stone wall with this gorgeous kind of um, vining greenery over the top with some beautiful flowers coming down. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this painting. This was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for whoever suggested doing a door or doors. Maybe we'll do a different kind of door in the future. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about doors and this particular door. If you have any questions and don't forget to check out the description for links to supplies and materials that I regularly use. And I will see you soon for our next watercolor journal page. Take care, y'all.